Hello everyone, I'm the Connet and welcome to the second part of my parrying guide. Today we will look at a few or uh, at many examples for the parry te techniques that I showed in the first part. If you haven't seen it yet, then I recommend watching it. And yeah, I am um, took them into three part into three tiers. So um Tier 1 parries are very easy parry techniques that everyone can do it and you can try out easily. Tier 2 parries require a really precise timing and a bit of experience in parrying and Tier 3 parries are very hard and require tons of prediction and um, experience. So let's actually get started with Tier 1 parrying. All right. In this fight we see this guy using a halberd. He did an R2. That, that's nice. If he do, does it again, like now, I can punish it easily with a Wrath of the Gods. So let's actually see what he does. Rolling R1, R1. That means he did two R1s in a row. That means he will do it probably again sometime. And we could back hop parry that. But not when he's two handed hit. That's unparryable. So um, yeah, let's wait for it. Um, now he's one, hang one handing it. And right, now it's parryable. So I take out my shield and I know I will do a backhop parry now. Because R2, R2, R2. Alright, he spams it. Let's just walk up, stay close, stay close to him, seize him a bit and backhop parry. Really easy. The timing, we will look at it again in slow motion. So now I take out my shield because I know I can parry him since he's one-handed. He rolls around me, I try to punish that with, with an R1, he does an R2 back hop. Here I was far too late on this parry because I didn't know how far he would delay it. And now I know, uh, um, now he's certain that he can spam because he hit that spam. And yeah, that is his disaster. I back hop through that and parry it immediately. So the second example is this. This is just like you see the timing of the curved greatswords R1 spam because the two-handed is not parryable. So it's a one-handed spam. Press parry right when he is about to start the second attack. This example here, this guy um, fought with this setup, I could easily back up parry that, so he swaps to a straight sword, turns around, and um, what you see in slow motion now, um, I follow him, hit him a bit with my broken straight sword, and he turns around, and immediately I back hop, back hop, and parry. So two times back hopping through straight sword spam is always the safe way. So here, this guy, Ultra Greatsword R1 spam. You have to really wait for it until he continues the R1 spam. So it requires a bit of. Um, yeah, you have to wait really hard. So this guy has a buffed up um, curved greatsword. And um, it's very easy. If they have a buffed up sword, they want to hit you with it because it does more damage. So back hop. He will hit again, parry. You can also repeat those fights if you want to know the exact timing. The timing can vary on the lag or on the um, net speed that you have. So this guy is actually um, having a Blue Moon Greatsword and he doesn't seem to spam R1 until now. He spammed R1 R1. So let's actually wait for the best opportunity to back up parry him. And that's now. You saw this after he got stunned and he recovered from the stun, he wanted to finish me because I was low on health. Here you see the spam again. And uh, yeah, now I move in and I catch him in the corner there a bit so that he couldn't roll away. He got stunned, stunned and now he wants to attack and I know that and I parry his um, overwhelming tr um, tries to finish me. Uh, this um, with uh, katana it's always hard to um, parry that because if you miss it you get two counter hits and end your dead. So we saw him um, we saw him first of all not 
here this was the first spam that he did and from that point since he hit the spam he will do spam again because he thinks he uh, can rely on that and at that point I make use of his spam so that he um, thinks he's gonna get me down with that and backhop parry that quite easily. Here on this thing I hear him buff, alright, just wait for him to spam R1 and since I'm right um, to the right of him I have to, I can even walk in a bit and yeah, you see this here, he does an R1, I walk in, walk in, wait and bam, you can really reaction parry that and yeah, that's the timing on it if you didn't know it already. So this guy, um, like he's already calling him try half or something new, or uh, so uh, so he's R1 spamming. I try to parry, bait parry that, didn't work out, and he continues to spam forever. So um, let's actually next time block. Uh, yeah, he heals. Let's heal too. So now we want to backup parry his spam. Let's look how I do it. Again, straight sword, um, double back hop and um, parrying at the third, third spam hit works, like you see here. Spam, I move in, shield up, back hop, uh, wrong time and boom. That's really not really hard to do and uh, very effective against spammers and really easy. You just have to back hop, wait a bit and parry. So this guy is special, he got me with uh, first R1 spam. And um, so if they get you most times and damage you with that, they think they could continue it. And that's the best opportunity to back up parry. Bam, bam. You also can figure out the lag timing on it. So if you were too early uh, first time, try it later. If you were too late, try it earlier. At your second back hop attempt. So really everyone can do that my opinion. Just try it out. This guy again straight sword, um, double back hop and parry tri timing. Back hop, back hop, parry. Just in the rhythm of their spam. Really easily. Try it out. So here, um, here I also back top him. Um, I kinda could um, expect him to do the um, second R1, so I just waited for it. Uh, second R2, one handed. And since I know the moveset, it's also important for parrying that you know the movesets of the weapons, so that you know how far the delay of the attacks is. So here another example of Ultra Greatsword parrying. Notice how long I wait for it. So he rolls and now I'm open and he turns around and starts the R1 spam. Wait, 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 parry! It's, it's really, you have to wait much. So that's it for the back hop parrying. Let's move on to the second parry technique. Alright, now we're here and now we are in this fu example fight. This guy, um, let's watch what he does. R1, R1, R1. Doesn't attack when I do a once guard break and he instantly attacks. So let's use that to do a guard break parry, guard break bait parry, like it is. So distance, distance, guard break parry. This has no exact timing. You just do a guard break and hammer your parry button in, and it will work. If they are really not uh, that, no. Uh, that um, good in PvP or that experienced, especially. Just do a guard break when you're at distance. Also works on gangs, banks or on gangs like you see here. This uh, phantom is coming in at one time. Uh, uh, now he's coming in. Notice, like I had to um, press um, forward one time because he rolled away from me, and I had to turn around to him to parry. And so guard break and forward and parry. That's a really um, not that hard to do technique, seriously. And um, since you don't have to predict some timing like you see here, this guy with this Chotel, 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 
Scout break, parry. It's it's it has not a timing. Just guard break and if you instantly hit the parry button after the guard break, you will get it. I haven't done anything else. So that's the guard break parry. Let's actually move on to the next parry technique. So let's look at this example fight. This fist fighter here, fist weapon fighter. Um, always L1 spamming, it's easy to parry, this is why I move in. And you saw that multi-hit channelers attack, that's when I decided, like you see here, to do a multi-hit parry. So just wait for him to do, or her to do another channelers attack and you saw that. I got stunned and got hit from the parry, uh, from the R2, but I could still pull off the parry because of the fast and um, really often multi hits of it. Swap to the shield and boom, there is the parry. That's really nice to do and really easy to do, so let's actually look at a few more examples of it. Here against the fist fighter, or oh, L1, 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 parry bait parry and multi hit parry. Really not hard to do. So here you see it again parry and Notice how he turns around from backing up to um, closing up to me. That's what the fist fighters always have to do. They have to be really close. So um, just wait for him to come near you and parry. So really easy. This guy with the smelter hammer, I can do that, except of the roll and run attacks two-handed. And yeah, he swaps fortunately to that master hit thing. Just back up through the first hit and parry the second hit. Yeah, it's really not that hard. Watch at it again. Of course, you um, could parry um, the first hit of the t red iron twin blade, but that's a bit harder to do than what I did here. So this thing, uh, Scythe of Wand, also has multi-hits. Here I tried backhop parry, didn't work. And you saw that since he closed up to me after I did the second parry, um, he got parried because I knew he would come near me and he did an R2, he could also have done an R1 and I could have got the parry. So um, that's it for the multi-hit parry. Let's move on to the next parry technique. Alright, here we have the Sentius guy, he runs away, so I just um, try to punish him and come close to him. So let's actually see what he does and boom! You saw this? He has a, ha a high wind up and I could just, like you see here in again in slow motion, he um, backs up, two hands his weapon, I get close and wind up, wind up, parry. I could uh, reaction parry this. This is a reaction parry that is really easy to do. Just press the parry button um, well timed in the time you see the attack coming, like uh, this. You probably didn't even knew you, you could parry that, but it's one of the um, hardest timings to do actually, but um, really rewarding if you um, get it down. You can do it really often, S and you really have to wait a, a high time with it. You really have to um, wait and um, yeah. And this guy, I tease him a bit with um, magic here, and. Roll attack, just the roll attack. So let's actually try to um, predict or react to the rolling attack. There is his roll, and there is my parry. Really easy. It's what's just a reaction to his roll. Of course, I bait him a bit with my magic cancel there, and yeah, notice the magic cancel, roll attack, and parry. Since he did it before, I was sure that he's doing it again, the parry. So. Yeah, this guy also red iron twin blade, and um, he gets me here with this ridiculous range, and n then he does a mistake. Yeah, I saw this um, not coming, but um, I could react to it. So he played. It was good that he mixed it up with an R2, his double R1 spam here, uh, but. Um, this is just too high, too high wind up to get it. You just have to trust your parrying skills <laughs> there, so that you can react, reaction parry that. This guy here, 
is um, like you notice walking around me and at the time he does the R2 I'm also um, already predicting it a bit but I can react to that to his R2 so yeah that's it for the um, uh, blah, blah, reaction parry all right now we have I have always a special with parries that are really easy to do and this is the bone fist walk up parry and yeah the bone fist um, has the low range of a um, fist weapon and since they have to get close to you and the bone fist is not really fast you can actually like you see here um, wait for him until he gets really near you and then parry when he reaches you so let's look at that again notice it bone fist has a high wind up so I can just press the parry button right when he touches my body with his body and yeah all right let's move to the tier 2 parries we see this example here this guy I speculate on an R1 spam but I didn't get it so I do R1 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 R1, R1. parry let's look what that attack bait parry uh, looked like R1 and since he was um, turning around and um, coming close to me I knew he would attack me what else should he do so I pressed the parry button out of my R1 spam which is also um, good because uh, if you R1 spam and chain into a parry the parry animation is faster so you really get this parry quite often but because this is in tier 2 you have to get the timing down quite well you see this his um, failed running attack he's walking around uh, not now he's walking around me rolling R1 R1 I'm open and parry uh, you can actually notice your opponent um, when he wants to attack this is a special case I noticed this guy using much roll attacks and this confirms my speculation after my um, after my um, spell he rolled through and tried to do a roll attack here bam and now I cancel my spell to bait him in roll away and since he does a roll and tries to punish me with a roll attack I swap to my shield and parry him this is the um, spell bait parry which is also an attack bait parry and a bit hard to do. also see this on this opponent I cancel it multiple times and notice how he's going in for the roll attack to um, punish it my spell so here spell cancel spell cancel and roll away he tries to punish it but I'm already standing in front of him and get an easy mode parry a really easy parry um, that is really not hard to speculate but still you have to get the timing done and you have to practice the timing so that's why it is in tier 2 this guy also you see him this roll attack confirmed my speculation that he would end this roll attack so we can actually get his um, his roll attacks to a parry if we get a good um, attack cancel in there which um, we also have to attack sometime that this attack cancel even works which I do here so now he speculates for uh, an attack that I do and boom since this roll was really delayed I could even parry him with a, s a full attack spell bait so notice this um, lightning spear misses he rolls through and there is his roll attack so this was also a spell bait parry yeah really good to do so this example shows uh, it again but an, an R2 actually R2 as a bait guard break guard break bait did work for a part now guard break bait yep would have worked but now I change it up for R2 I'm open boom you notice um, in the slow-mo that comes now 
I run attack, do the R2 to catch the throw, but I'm too early. He turns around and walks a bit up to me. That's a hundred percent sign that they will do a parry if they are random players or PvE players. So you can really play a bit with them. This is a special a bit. Yeah, he was a bit late with this roll, so I could just finish my spell cast and immediately parry. You can also do this with um, throwables like throwing knives or so. Or firebombs, but that's a bit harder and requires more precise timing. Alright, this here. Notice how I um, get open through my R1. Oh, he gets the attacks in. Roll attack, R2, and boom. Easy, easy. And my parry animation was faster because um, I had an R2 done before. R2, now see him, boom. Yeah, that's it for the um, attack bait parries. Let's move on in tier 2. Alright, let's look at this example. Roll attack. Alright, nice, you did a roll attack. And you parry, try to parry that, so uh, also a parry guy. What can we do? Alright, let's actually try to roll attack parry and bam. You see that what he did? He tried to punish my vulnerability that I had with my parry attempt with an R1. Here. No, not here, but his roll attack, that comes. Now I try to parry it, failed, and now I notice him attacking me while I was vulnerable through the parry. Let's do this again. Walk up, parry. I didn't even speculate on him attacking me at that point, but I knew I could bait him into um, attacking me through uh, parrying. That is the parry bait parry which is uh, requires quite a bit of skill and you can really be proud when you get something done like this you see this i do a guard break and try to do the um, walk up parry failed and this is a parry bait parry because i'm vulnerable through uh, wanting a parry uh, try this out uh, this guy, um, boom, boom, yeah, that's it, it's, it's really not, it's, it's in tier 2 because it requires really precise timing like um, you may know, and um, just parry and parry again. Here in this fight, oops, sorry fun. I also had to adapt for the lag that we had and I noticed earlier so you also have to keep in mind that and also because of you not having a attack as wind up you can also um, um, your parry animation is not as fast as if you bait with an R1 you see here he turned around walked a bit in front of me and he sta stood still and in that point I knew he would do something with one attack this guy here was a quite good fighter, so you know, uh, you see that this technique also works against quite skilled players. And you see him using a bit, of a few run attacks, and then backstep, parry, parry. This is easy. It's really not incredibly hard to do. But, um, yeah, like I said multiple times now, the timing is important. And you can see this timing on my channel in a few videos now. Alright, let's move on to the next fight. So, the next example. You see that? Hmm, what are we doing now in this fight? Hmm, he's a nice unused weapon and he walks up to me and then does the R1. Nice, we can use that as walk up parrying. Like I explained, I just walk up to him and see if he does an R1. And since he did, I can speculate. Boom! I just did not more than parrying at the exact moment. Like right... oh no. It means a while. At the exact moment when our bodies touched. Right now. You saw this? His run attack, of course, is a multi-hit, so easy to parry, but... It's really not hard to do. 
<laughs> like most of the parries here, but you have get used to it, the timing. This guy, you see this, that he is a quite experienced or really, yeah, high level or something player, but I think he's quite experienced. And, yeah, you saw that. This was technically also a mix between a walk-up and a um, guard break parry, but um, since it was not the immediate parry after the guard break that I did here, he turned around, walked up to me, and I walked up to him, and I pressed the parry button at the exact point when our bodies touched. I could also get have done this in the um, first category, but um, it's um, a bit harder to do than tier 1 parries. So, yeah. So, let's watch the fight again. Guard break, he rolls away, and walk up, walk up, walk up. Boom! I did not speculate. Uh, I did not uh, reaction on this attack. You can't parry this running attack on reaction. And then we have this guy, and and he walked around me and attacked me after that. So let's walk him around me, get close, and at the point where he gets really close to me, see distance is high, distance is high, distance is high. I move in now and. Boom! At the point where the distance was nothing, I get the parry, because I parry at the exact spot there. So, this guy, with his R1, R1, I back up, he moves in, R1, I back up, he moves in, R1. Boom! You saw that? Also, you, like you see here, you have to watch at your opponent what he does. You cannot um, walk up parry someone who is just circling around you. That it's not gonna happen <laughs> unless you're really good at predictioning your opponent and know when he's doing it so next example against all of our favorite metas the pokey boom pokies could do their attacks from a safe distance but this guy just walks up to me and boom i can get a really easy parry so let's move on to the next thing in this tier 2 Alright, for the special tip in tier 2, and um, I have this, the dagger roll attack parry. This guy is fighting with a dagger, which is really hard to parry if he's not spamming it. And um, yeah, I figured out the <laughs> roll attack timing a few times. So you see my parry attempts there all the time. Roll attack of him, and um, boom, too early. Boom, too early, and let's do it a bit later now. Boom! Do you see how... How fast the uh, roll attack of his um, dagger comes? It's technically the same as the uh, straight sword, I think, but a bit um, faster. I think. I don't know, but this parry timing it's quite hard to figure out, so let's move on to the ultra tier now, which is really extreme. Alright, at tier 3 we have the extreme prediction reaction leg spike parries, which I call it. Here you basically have a really lagging opponent like this guy, and to kill him you have to be awesome in prediction and s and things like you see here. You have to adapt to the lag, you have to know what your opponent is doing, you have to walk up to him, you have to have right movement. So if you're able to do uh, those parries, then you're really top tier in parrying. Then you're awesome. See that? He stops, boom. And yeah, I can. you have to get this film in your head where you could imagine what your opponent is doing on his screen and um, trying to attack you and so you can like parry that. In this example um, it's also, it went quite well. I this You see the lag here, I did my walk and I knew he would punish the walk. So I parried him and in my head I had the imagination of him walking up to me then doing an hour one. And you see this? Walk up, walk up, walk up, R1. Boom. And I got the parry. Because, like, those are 
blind parries that you can't really um, you have no evidence in it other than your imagination and how well you know your opponent and um, now here in this example you see how I can notice the lag um, uh, this this magic here now this one boom it hits and the damage comes far too late so boom you saw this extreme prediction let's watch it this again this is the um, thing where you can see how bad the lag is or that there is a big a big amount of lag he rolls and then got hit so yeah of course you have to have luck that your um, thoughts on the parry timing is right but um, that's a thing or uh, a thing of um, experience in PvP and keep PvPing and keep trying and yeah this guy also you see this the lag that he had and um, you s can also see now that uh, walk up parry is also doable in prediction so now the lag seems better but we still have a bit of thing and so this normally the timing would have been far uh, far far uh, later than that what I parried but um, see this me walking up I see his back hop and since I know the delay is high I can parry that so that I think sums it up for this video does it yes and now if you're doing an example you can think by yourself so let's watch at this fight this guy I don't say anything now but uh, you will have action there so to train you for parries notice how his playstyle is now the question how do you parry him you can watch it again if you haven't seen it and choose between one or two of these options that are here what are you thinking pause the video here and uh, think about it solution walk up walk up back hop boom back hop parry but don't be disappointed have you said it was a C the parry bait parry walk up parry like you saw here did not work parry parry yeah so that's it for this video I hope this guide could help you at one way or another like mister I won't forget likes to say and I hope um, that you liked this parry guide and it helped you even if you are experienced in PvP or if you are new in PvP who knows so thank you all for watching I hope to see you all in my next videos bye bye